Welcome to Trajectory Part 2. We're going to look at the motion of an object when it moves in two directions, horizontally and vertically at the same time. <clears throat> On your screen you see a diagram of a path of an object. When it's thrown upward at an angle, you notice it takes a nice curve like this, and this curve is called a parabola. Remember this from your math classes, no doubt. Distance from the ground to the top of the parabola to the top of the arc is S sub y. The distance from the beginning, where the ball leaves the ground or object leaves the ground, to where it lands is called S sub x, also known as a range, or how far, how far down range it goes. <clears throat> At the top of the arc, right up here, the velocity in the vertical direction is zero. The object starts here, goes up, up, up. It's acted upon by gravity and it slows down. And when it reaches here, its velocity is zero. And lastly, the velocity in the x direction is a constant. I'm going to work a problem here and see how these uh, values are calculated. We have an object, initial velocity, 30 meters per second, initial launch angle, 40 degrees. We're going to find v sub x, v sub y, t, t total. And this is the t, the amount of time it takes to reach the top of the arc. This is how long it takes to reach from the ground to the top of the arc and back down. This is the range and this is the height. <clears throat> v sub x, very simple, v cosine theta, v sub x, 30.0 meters per second times the cosine of 40 degrees. V sub x times the cosine of 40, which is 0 0.77. V sub x, 23.0 meters per second. V sub y is just V times the sine of theta, very simple. V sub y, 30.0 meters per second times the sine of 40 degrees. And the sine of 40 degrees is 0 0.64 and v sub y, 19.3 meters per second. All right. This is the constant velocity in the x, or horizontal direction. This is the initial velocity in the y, or upward vertical direction. Now we're going to find out, calculate how long it takes to reach the top of the arc. To do that, we're going to use the definition of acceleration. <clears throat> And delta v is nothing more than the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by the time. Now again, because we're near the surface of the Earth and the object is rising, the acceleration is negative, and it's going to be negative g. So it's minus 9.8 meters per second squared. You remember we said the top of the arc, the velocity of the object is zero, and it had an initial velocity of 19.3 meters per second. We just calculated that above right here. And divide by t. Solve for t. And it gives us a time to the top of the arc of 2.0 seconds. The total time, which is the time it takes for the object to start at the ground to go up and come back down, is just two times the amount of time it takes to get to the top of the arc. The object takes just as much time to come down as it did to go up. For our particular problem, that's 2 times 2 seconds, or a total flight time of 4 seconds. Last two object, uh, calculations we're going to do. How far downrange does it go? V sub x times t. 23.0 meters per second times the flight time, 4.0 seconds, gives us a distance downrange of 92.0 meters. Next we're going to calculate how high the object goes. And you're going to remember S sub y, and this is an accelerating object. So the distance covered by an accelerating object is given by this. Now right here you're probably accustomed to seeing v sub zero. 
I put in V sub y to remind you that this is the initial vertical or V sub y value that we calculated when we first started this, right up here. The vertical distance, one half. Again, we're still near the surface of the Earth. The object is being slowed by gravity. So g is a minus. So it's minus 9.8 meters per second square. Now the time in this case is two seconds because we're only looking at how long or how high does the object go, which only means the distance upward, not the total flight time. Now S sub zero is zero because the object started on the ground. It gives us a vertical distance of 19.0 meters. Now these problems are a little longer probably than you're accustomed to, so I'm suggesting when this is over you copy this table over and use it to uh, work problems. There, you, there are six basic steps. So step number one, calculate v sub x, and how do we do that? We use v cosine theta. Step two, calculate v sub y, v sine theta. Number three, calculate the time to the top of the arc. Use the definition of acceleration. Remember v sub f, zero meters per second, a minus g minus 9.8 meters per second squared. Four, calculate total time, which is just two times t, which you found in step three. Five, calculate s sub x, which is just v sub x times time. And number six, s sub y, one half a t squared plus v y t plus s zero. A again is minus g minus 9.8 meters per second squared. One word of advice, when you're working these problems, and it's pretty tedious, but my suggestion is you actually write out all these equations on a piece of paper and do the calculations that way. Jamming everything into a calculator and pushing the equals button is not the best way to learn this material. You retain more when you write everything out. Crap.